In a moment, I'm going to take you through the game between Fabiano Caruana and Renat Zhumabayev, played in the third round of the FIDE World Cup. This is a tremendous fight. Before then, let me uh, just fill you in on what's been going on. Uh, I've had a break from the channel for the last few days because, well, I've been incredibly busy with all kinds of things, but I was working at the London Chess Fest, which took place in Trafalgar Square yesterday, Sunday. And you can see photos on the community tab on the, on the YouTube channel. Uh, it was just a brilliant day. Um, saw, saw a lot of you down there, actually. It was brilliant. Thanks for, for saying hi. And uh, yeah, I hope it goes, goes uh, ahead next year as well. It was tremendous fun. And merch in the PowerPlay shop. Merch alert. So we've got a new design. Here we go. Don't know if you can see that. Yes, there you go. Pin and win, finally. So you can find that in the PowerPlay chess, uh, chess shop. And uh, for the next few days, there is a discount of 20% on all merch in the PowerPlay chess shop. Links down there. You'll find the code down there. Just apply that. You get 20% off on pin and win, Queen in Siberia, the Octopus Knight, all your favourites on t-shirts, hoodies, and of course, mugs, tea mugs. There's Queen in Siberia. Okay, advert over. Uh, I'll mention that at the end again. Let's have a look at this game because it's tremendous. So the first game between these two, first classical game, was drawn. Um, I should say Rinat Jumabayev. He's 31, almost 32 years old from Kazakhstan. Um, I mean, a, a decent grandmaster. He's he's rated here twenty six thirty seven. Of course, Fabiano is the favourite, but you know Shumabarev is a decent player. So it's an exchange variation of the Queen's Gambit declined. Um, I I'm very used to playing this with black. I rather like it. And here, my recommendation on my uh, DVDs uh, is to play. H6 actually, and then play knight h5, and you've sort of managed to include this move, which can be quite useful, and you and you also give yourself the option to go queenside as well. But Jumabai have played after almost 20 minutes thought, played knight h5 immediately. And then, well, clearly he didn't want to have the pawn on h6 because he played the pawn to g6. But of course, black is a tempo behind. But this is still a respectable variation for both both sides. And here, if white goes for the very traditional minority attack, um, of course, it's been seen before in this position. But it's actually not so great because um, the knight will come to b6. That's a very stable square. Um, and well, basically, black is fine there, and, and can often look to occupy the c4 square. But Caruana goes in a completely different direction. He wants to attack on the king side, as is clear from this move. So his rooks are going to support those pawns in rolling down the board. That's the idea in theory, anyway. So knight f6. This knight doesn't head for the queen side, but instead wants to pack out the king side. Knight c1, well, Caruana uh, wants to play f3. And of course, the e3 pawn needs protection. Bishop e6, black develops. There we go, f3. So this is already, um, you know, potentially quite unpleasant. I mean, at the moment, of course, a move like that, uh, white will have to contend with the knight coming to f4. And you've got to watch out for that pawn can be a little bit weak. So white needs to prepare it. Anyway, it's black's turn, b6. So black needs counterplay, and black is going to play c5 and get his own play going in the middle and on the queen side. Queen f2. Caruana making his intentions absolutely plain, that queen swinging over to the king side. c5. So, of course, now it's not so simple to push forward with e4 when that d4 pawn is, well, it's all very fluid. Um, but white does have other options for attacking, of course. There's the g pawn as well, that uh, comes into consideration. 
And well, but even e4 sometimes is, is possible. Uh, it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable for black to have the queen opposite that rook. So Jumabayev just pushed the queen back to d8. Caruana advances. He does enjoy attacking, particularly from a sound basis. And you can see that he has good harmony uh, in his uh, in his in his army. Harmony in the army. I like that. That's that could be a new one. That could be a new one, a new new meme or whatever. Harmony in the army. Um, so this knight swings over. Rook b8. So this is preparing to advance that b pawn, so c4 and b5. So Caruana plays a4, c4 anyway, and a6, so b5 coming, so there is counterplay on the queen side. But uh, Caruana has prepared a good counter to this. He exchanged, and then he didn't want to allow this, uh, well, these rolling pawns, so he blocked it with b4, very interesting move. And, of course, that pawn can be attacked, you know, maybe queen e7, but white will just defend it. Um, and, and that knight is very useful looking at the pawn, well, not just on b5, but d5 as well. So, Shumabayev, I mean, this is a tricky decision. Do you, do you leave that there or, or do you exchange? Well, Shumabayev exchanged. There are pros and cons to this move. I think what speaks against that move is that now the bishop is lined up with the knights against that d-pawn. I think what speaks for the move is that the queen side opens a little bit, so it might be easier for black to get counterplay. So first of all, b4. And here Caruana put the knight back to e2. Could have gone knight a4. But, and, and looking to get into the c5 square, that feels very natural for white. But I suspect that Caruana wasn't sure about this. That bishop just spins round comes to c4, so that takes a bit of the pressure off d5. And it means that, well, you know, these pieces always have to maintain that blockade here. I mean, positions like this, well, you don't really want to allow those pawns. So in that way, black does find counterplay in this position. Um, so Caruana played the knight back to e2. He's looking to swing that knight over to the king's side. That's where he's focusing on but again a really nice spin with this bishop bishop c8 this gives black some counterplay bishop a6 so we are reaching really starting get to to uh, get to boiling point in this game that bishop looking at the rook on f1 if rook f2 once again that bishop will come to c4 and that kind of ties white down you know you can imagine the rook coming over here perhaps black would exchange some pieces like this and it's hard to see how white attack is actually going to break break through here um and in the mean meanwhile black does have pretty good counterplay on the queen side so this was a big decision from caruana he decided to press forward with g5 just sacrificing the exchange so bishop takes rook. And, well, if pawn takes, in fact, that because of the pin, then you can see that if pawn takes knight, then the bishop can just retreat back here. There's no problem because there is a pin here. So Caruana recaptured. And now, well, I... I mean, this, this move feels like a very natural move to put the knight back here very interesting if black just gives up a pawn like this and this actually looks like a very good practical chance because after white takes that pawn actually there isn't really much of an attack for white and after rook c8 that rook comes down here hits the bishop hits the pawn on e3 black is the exchange up with pretty good well i was going to say counterplay i don't know who's attacking who here um, or knight takes rook b5. Um, that knight does a very good job on h5 actually of shutting out white pieces. But Zhumabayev decided to play knight fe8. So Caruana took on d5. So 
compensation for the exchange is obvious. Caruana has a pawn and potentially a very nice center. That bishop also looks at f7. Nevertheless, black's king side is, well, it's reasonably safe for the moment. Rook b5 is an excellent move. So that hits the knight, but also, well, pin and win. There is a pin here. That is the problem for white. And if white plays e4, kind of a very natural move, actually the knight comes to e6, looks at d4, looks at g5, and actually things are turning black's way. So Caruana decided to play queen e4 to defend the knight. But queen takes pawn. And it's clear that Zhumabayev actually is doing well at this moment. I mean, this looks quite dangerous. Uh, nevertheless, black has so many pieces around the king, you feel it should be okay. And actually here, Zhumabayev made a big mistake. He could have played knight d6. And then taken here. And taken with the pawn, which looks a bit ugly, but actually it basically exchanges off lots of white pieces. And for example, here the king can just tuck itself in the corner and rook g8 is coming. Actually, black is pretty safe there. Extra exchange. At some moment, this pawn is going to come good or you know, there are going to be weaknesses here or white's king. So that was the way to go. Instead, Jumabayev played knight f6 and now the game is once again in the balance because after pawn takes pawn, discovered attack, queen takes pawn, Bishop takes pawn check. I suspect this was the move that Shumabayev had overlooked. He was playing pretty quickly um, at this moment, trying to get to the time control. Uh, this was a classical game, but when it's a position as complicated as this, the time gets eaten up very quickly. So if rook takes, then there is a huge check on a8. This is the problem. So queen takes instead. Rook takes queen, rook takes rook. And here, well, Caruana played queen d3, which feels sort of very natural to attack a rook, you know, maybe trying to gain a tempo. But queen c2 was a better move with the idea of queen c8 check. So it's not possible to put, push this pawn because of a check here, and then the rook drops. There's a check, double attack. So after rook b6, let's say, then the queen blockades the pawn. That's a little bit uncomfortable. And, well, I mean, here, white is better, basically. And and instead of that, <clears throat> because of this pin, it's rather unpleasant, actually. You know, these pawns could advance. Black has to be careful. So that was the way to go. Queen c2, maybe not such an obvious move. Queen d3 played. Rook g5. In fact, the rook wanted to go over here. <clears throat> That's the interesting thing. Because suddenly, black gets a counterattack on white's king. It's remarkable. I'm sure Caruana had imagined that he was actually standing very well in this position. But it's... Well, watch what happens here. Knight g6. Oh, now be careful. This is starting to get very tricky. Um, my computer believes that queen d2 is still okay for white, but it is very tricky. It is a very difficult position. Instead, Caruana played what to my eyes is a very natural move, pinning one of the rooks to the king. Perhaps he'd underestimated this move, h5, and incredibly, white is in trouble here. So, for example, after queen takes b4, knight check. And rook g4 is mate. So king g2 played, h4, the knight is lost. Now, black has no pawns left. It's queen and three against two rooks and knight. However, white's king is in some trouble here. And it's going to be hard to actually advance those pawns. <clears throat> rook f3. Big move. So immediately put some pressure here. Queen check. And crucially, black's king actually is covered by that knight. King and knight often 
are a very good defensive duo because the king controls these single squares around itself while the knight controls those squares uh, so actually yeah a lot of squares protected by the king and knight together queen b8 protects g3 so obviously if black took on g3 then it would just liquidate to a draw after queen takes rook but Zhumabayev recognizes that actually he has excellent chances here rook e3 um, basically that knight is about to enter the game um, once some mopping up has taken place of these pawns uh, of course if e5 then that blocks the queen so e5 rook takes um, so these pawns are dropping here rook d4 takes and this is just very unpleasant for white i'm sure it, it must be lost at this point of course you know it's not easy when this queen is very active and you can see pinning pin and win unfortunately it's it's not even pin and draw here um white is losing uh, and here is a brilliant move from Zhumabayev, which allows this knight finally to enter the attack. If it's just the rooks, it'll be a draw. But watch this. Black to play and win. Rook d3. Great move. Of course, if that's taken, then there's going to be a knight fork. And if the queen moves back along this diagonal, say c1, then g3 is dropping, and that's the end of the story. So, queen e1, now the knight comes in. G pawn drops, and here Caruana resigned. Let's see why. Well, obviously, if king here, then rook d1 check, and if king e1, well, the simplest way to go is just to take that queen. And of course, that is game over. So, what a shocker! In round three, Fabiana Caruana, the number two in the world, is knocked out of the World Cup by Rinat. Zhumabayev from Kazakhstan. So congratulations to him. Great achievement. Um, Fabiano will be very disappointed. He now actually drops to number three in the world rankings below 2800. He's now 2798. Ding 2799 and Magnus is still right up there at top with 2854. That's a pretty sizable lead for Caruana in the world classical rankings. But I thought, excellent game by Zhumabayev here. Um, very complex Queen's Gambit, the kind of Queen's Gambit that I really enjoy playing as black. You come under pressure, but maneuvers like this, bishop c8, round to a6, excellent, providing counterplay when the bishop actually reaches c4. Tremendous stuff. And don't forget again, um, all merch in the Powerplay Chess shop, online shop, has 20% discount for the next few days. Just apply the code, you'll see it in the uh, comments down there in the link as well. And there we go, pin and win the new design in the Powerplay Chess shop. Thanks for watching.